businesses actually should commit to implementing security assessments as given. To thank the Wajibu Wetu, so you have to protect your business and at the same time make it open and inviting enough for your customers to come and spend money. And this balance is not an easy balance. So believe me, I understand. I also understand the obligations of the state to protect your business. Assessments are followed by committed follow-up by the owners of business. So if we send NCTC officers to your business to assess the state of your security, we usually give you a nice practical list of recommendations that I have again and again ask my officers to always understand that you can't ask for the whole world because a business at the end of the day has to think in a certain way. We need the owners of business or the managers of security to commit to implementing those recommendations. Well, our reporter, Julie Wamboi, was covering this uh, story for us. And uh, good to see you, Julie. Perhaps looking at these new trends we are seeing happening across the world when it comes to extremism, they've had a big impact on businesses, especially when you look at uh, what we did see at the Ducit D2 attack. From where you see it, what were some of the emerging issues that did come out of this particular uh, briefing earlier today? Well, Julie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. All right. And uh, linked to this uh, developing story where we, you covered actually earlier today, of course, uh, a number of issues did emerge when it comes to how attacks affect businesses. From where you see it, what were some of the key issues that came out from the stakeholders who are taking part in this forum? Um, thank you, Abi. Now, some of the reports that came out is the way business was affected in, uh, area, in the recent uh, attack that happened here in Nairobi. And the, the report looks at how we could counter violent extremism. And uh, some of the ways were first to protect businesses. And they actually told us that we should refer to the area as uh, 14 Riverside and not do it because Ducit is the business and Riverside is the road. Now, some of the areas that they looked at in terms of how we could counter the violent extremism were CSR, employment opportunities, vocational skills training, um, there's the private health facilities, there's the security agencies that they also looked at, and there are also some areas like uh, financing business fund, where if, if a business happens to be affected by violent extremism, there could be a fund where people can get resources on how to rebuild themselves. And uh, these areas were looked at on how everyone could be included in the fight against the violent extremism. Abby. All right. Thank you so much, Julie. Of course, we shall be looking forward to your report later on in our subsequent bulletins. Thank you so much, Julie. Well, uh, let's now take you to another interesting story around the millennials. Well, youth in Kenya who are the millennials currently form a huge part of the workforce, while others still remain unemployed, hoping for a job. It is evident that they are becoming a fast teeming population in Kenya and across the world. It has been brought to light that some employers are grappling with the challenge of ensuring that they stay at work or maximize fully on their potential in the best interest of the company's goals. Well, on that note, Bright Monday has, uh, did actually uh, release a research in partnership with Andela on Millennium and the digital marketplace in a bid to help employers boost millennial work productivity at their workplace. Well, here is more on that. We were looking at the statistics, looking at um, the number of millennials in the, in the marketplace looking for work, um, what influences their decisions um, to change careers, to join specific organizations. practitioners who need to study this report and look at what the number 
millennials in the world. So it's a good visit to see the Jewish American corporations having an interest here because they have a foot in both countries, in Israel and in America, and we have a good relationship with both of those two countries. And for us, this is again because we are saying Africa is the place to be. We're seeing a lot of interest from around the world, and so we are hosting many delegations that are looking into investment opportunities. There's tremendous parallels between the countries, and, and we really feel that in all the business sectors they're opening up and you have your certain specific strengths i know your has outlined uh, textiles and leather as being one type of manufacturing arena to to grow in food security is another one all of these are areas that i think there can be tremendous connectivity it shows kenya's unique position and uh, in terms of one a strong uh, robust um, resilient economy um, also in terms of its location, meaning an economy that is connected to the rest of the region, uh, both Eastern African community and also the, uh, the broader sub-Saharan region, and also an economy that is strong in terms of macro outcomes. So these are all things that are providing, let's say, dividends. And this is what the investors have seen, and this is what they are looking at as they make their decision uh, for investment in Kenya relative to other, uh, other places that they also um, have as options. Well, Kenya could earn up to 160 billion shillings in 2019 from horticulture export. This is after registering an improved performance in 2018. Earnings from the sector grew by 33% last year to 154 billion shillings thanks to aggressive promotion industry players in traditional and new markets. According to the 2018 data compiled by the Kenya Flower Council, Fresh Produce Exporters Association of Kenya and Fresh Produce Consortium of Kenya indicates flowers earned 113.17 billion shillings, vegetables fetched 27.69 billion shillings and fruits earned 12.83 billion shillings. We know how to intervene both at the local level, at the farm level and also our influence in the international market. We have also done a lot of promotion so there is confidence that uh, our uh, buyers are getting uh, when it comes to our produce and therefore compared to our competitors probably they are ordering much more than they have done before. In 2018, the horticulture industry was hit hard by acute shortage of soluble fertilizer resulting from stringent and lengthy clearance process by the Kenya Bureau of Standard at Mombasa Port. The sector was also hit by the imposition of 16% value-added tax on pest control products and VAT return estimated to be 3.5 billion shillings, increasing the cost of production. If we did not experience some of the challenges that were really major and hit the industry, we are sure that probably would have gone uh, beyond 160 billion uh, shillings, but we remain a very progressive industry. The government through the Ministry of Trade is working towards expanding the export market for the horticulture products beside the primary European markets. We are looking at if we can make inroads into uh, West Africa, it will be a plus. And uh, with uh, new um, renegotiated arrangements with South Africa, if we can start exporting directly uh, to countries like South Africa, we can see our volumes going up. But globally, uh, we have earmarked uh, aligning ourselves with uh, uh, government strategy on export. We are looking at destinations such as uh, Australia, where we have a presence, but we want to expand Japan, uh, India, uh, United Arab Emirates, 
uh, Russia and, uh, and the US and Canada. Very soon we will actually have the CFTA agreement implemented. And that means access for us to SADC, which we are never accessing because we, 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 we pay duties, ECOWAS countries, other countries that are not necessarily within the region that we have a free trade arrangement like EAC or COMESA. Agriculture is the biggest sector in the economy, accounting for about 30% of annual output. It is also a critical source of employment for thousands. Brenda Kirubuketi, N News. Well, Kenya is negotiating a trade deal with the United Kingdom set to take effect in 2021. This follows a move by the UK to leave the European Union economic bloc. Trade Principal Secretary Dr. Chris Kipto says from March to December 2020, there will be an interim trade agreement to ensure there are no market disruptions. Kenya has a trade agreement with members of the European Union under the Export Partnership Agreements. And here's more on that. So it's a good visit to see the Jewish American corporations having an interest here because they have a foot in both countries, in Israel and in America, and we have a good relationship with both of those two countries. And for us, this is again because we are saying Africa is a place to be. We're seeing well, there was a small mix up there, but of course, uh, we shall be getting you more on that story. Well, just before we go for the quick commercial break, I just want to remind you that today we'll be taking a focus on the state of tourism in the country. And our Twitter poll question is, do you think Kenya's tourism sector needs to rethink its marketing strategy?